Hello, today I will be showing you how to install Emu VR with the UGC. As of today's date, the Discord is still inaccessible to the public. If you're not already in the Discord, you can't access it. Um, that's unfortunate because that's where the newest version is. Um, thankfully, some other people have re-uploaded it outside of the Discord, so it is still possible to get it just takes some digging. Um, I will be providing everything in the description so you don't have to waste time looking for it like I did. So let's create a install folder anywhere you want. I have it on the desktop just so I can remember, make it easy. We're going to go to the wiki, which you can access from the official website. Now, on the wiki, we can see that the current version is nearly two years old. Uh, the newer version came out late 2023. It has access to the UGC, which we're trying to get. Once we're at the wiki, we're going to go to Installation Guide and install these two files. Once those two are installed, we're going to follow all of this information. Um, if you want to do this yourself, you can. Uh, I will be skipping through most of it pretty quickly, so if you need to slow down, you can go through it and do it at your own pace. But anyway, we're going to open up our install folder and start installing the files. So the first thing we want to install is EmuVR. So you're going to go to your downloads and find the EmuVR zip file. And you're just going to highlight all of it and drag it on in. Pretty simple. And once this is done, you're going to do the same thing with RetroArch, which I will get prepared now. The way you install RetroArch is you're going to highlight everything and bring it into the RetroArch folder already in your install folder. After we've installed RetroArch, we can now patch the folder. So we're going to open up the patch folder and go to Wigu and extract everything into the main install folder. You'll see a few more folders pop up. The most important one is UGC. This is where all your user generated content will go. The way you would add UGC is you find the UGC folders and you pick and choose what you want. This folder has about one gigabyte of stuff and the others have double if not triple. Um, if you add everything it will significantly slow down your game. I suggest you only put in the stuff you like. For the sake of example I'm going to input everything just to show you how it works. Now once we've installed that, we can finally start adding our games. The first step is to go to the Games section and add the folders for the systems you want to play on. You can rename these or add new folders, it doesn't matter. We can make a folder called PlayStation 1. I'll rename this one to Nintendo 64. And this one will be Game Boy Advance. Let's do GBA. Now within these, you can place your games. I will not be providing any games for you to use. You have to get those yourself. But for the sake of example, I'll be using GoldenEye and Ocarina of Time. And if you notice, these are shorthand names. They're not the actual file names you'd get when you download them. But as you'll see later, it doesn't really matter what you name them as long as the file ID is the same. So we can go to PlayStation 1 and I have a game for that. Then in Game Boy Advance I have two games. I chose these games specifically to show you something I learned recently that I will showcase later. Once you've added the systems here that you want, you can back out and go into Game Scanner. You might get a Windows Defender pop up, but that's okay. You can just accept it. 
first we're going to autofill and it detects it detects the game folders you've created and it assumes what device it's going to be on and it also shows you which emulator it will use to run them after we autofill we're going to save changes update core data download missing cores and finally scam games scan games for EMUVR once you have finally finished doing all of this you can exit out you can go back a page and load EMUVR I would suggest using the desktop version first just so you can make sure things work and once everything is good you can use your oculus version or steam VR or whatever mode you prefer and this log here you can see all the UGC that's being loaded in the more stuff you have the longer this is going to take so like I said try to only put in the stuff you think you'll actually use once you've loaded in you can move and look around WASD to move Q and E to go up and down because it's dark you can look up and press space on the light to turn it on or you can come to the light switch and do the same thing first we're going to move a console over to connect it to the TV press X on a console and place it wherever you want close to a TV you can also freeze objects in place by holding F it's important you do this because very often you'll move things around on accident and mess everything up like this To connect items, you press F once on the console and once on the TV. Now you've connected the TV to the console. Because I'm not a psycho, I'm going to move the Nintendo so the wires aren't in front of the screen. So you can hold F again to unlock it and move it around to somewhere else. I'm going to put it right here. Then I'm going to lock it again so I don't knock it over. You can then pull out one of your games and put it in the console. Now once you get the game running, you can sit and press space to take control of the game. You can't move while you do this. Um, you're completely locked into the game. In order to unlock from the game, you press control and space bar. Press space again to turn off the console and C to turn off the TV. Now I'm going to load in a Game Boy game. So let's come over here and get Emerald and Fire Red. Now if you notice, these are both the same. They look the same. If you're familiar with the cartridges, Fire Red is a reddish color and Emerald is green. The same thing with Nintendo 64. GoldenEye looks like a regular Nintendo 64 cartridge, while Ocarina of Time can be gold depending on the edition you have. There is a way to make these games look how they should, including the labels, which I will show you now. Now in order to get the game carts to be the correct color, first you need to make sure you have them in your UGC folder. In this case, we're looking for Game Boy Advance, Fire Red, and Emerald, and Nintendo 64 Gold. If you have those installed, you're good to go. Go into your games folder and create a new folder for every game you're trying to change. In this case, Nintendo 64 Gold for Ocarina of Time. We're going to do two for the new Game Boy Advance, Fire Red and Leaf Green. Once you have all your games sorted how you like, Back out and go to Custom, UGC, and copy the Custom Media Text document. Take that document and paste it in the Game Scanner folder. Once you've pasted that, open the Game Scanner again and redo the steps we did earlier. Attempt autofill. And we can see that it's created three new folders for the new folders we created earlier. Come to Media section 
and change each of these medias to the proper custom media tags at the bottom. So for the Game Boy Advanced Emerald folder, we wanted to use the Game Boy Advanced Emerald media. Do the same for the other games you've chosen. Once done, we can save changes, scan games for EMU VR, and it'll say new games detected, but really it's just detecting the old games in the new folders you created. We can now close out of Game Scanner. Now that we have changed the colors of the cart, we can add the right labels to the games. Back out of here and go back to Customs and go into Labels. In the Labels folder, you should see a folder for every folder you created earlier in the Games folder. You want to make sure these folders are named the same as they were in that Games folder. So PS1 in 64 gold and so on. Once you've done this, you can go into these folders and add the label of the game. In order to get the labels that you want, you can go back to the customization page of the wiki, go to the custom artwork Google Sheet, and find thousands of labels for different games of different systems. Once you have found the labels for the games you want, go back to the folder where you store your labels. This is my fire red folder. So here I will put the fire red PNG I downloaded. I'll do the same thing for the emerald. For now, I'm not going to add a label for every game. But if you want, you can take the time and add labels for all the games you want. Instead, I'm going to show you how to add box art. Come back to your custom folder where you see the labels and posters and whatnot. Create a new folder called boxes. Within your boxes folder, you're going to do the same as earlier. Make a new folder for every system with games that you want box art for. In this case, I already have a PS1 folder made, and within it, I have Mega Man Legends and Mega Man Legends 2. Pay attention to the size of the images you download. For example, this would fit in a standard PS2 case, not the small jewel case PS1 games usually came in. You can also add custom posters to your room. Go back to custom and into posters. Now I'm not going to show you how to do this in order to save time, but this text document will tell you exactly how to do it. It's very simple, I'm sure you can figure it out. You can also customize the way your wallpaper and flooring looks in the miscellaneous folder, but I won't be showing you how to do that either. Whenever you're done customizing, it's time to load back into the game. If you've made any changes to your room, you should see those changes now. I didn't do anything to my room, so everything looks exactly the same. I've already spawned in the items I changed earlier. As you can see, Pokemon Emerald and Fire Red have their respective coloring and labeling. Ocarina of Time has the gold cartridge, while GoldenEye still has the gray cartridge. If you look at this case here, there's nothing on it right now. As soon as I put Mega Man in, it gets the box art. I can also take Mega Man out and the box retains the art, meaning I can take the box and move it around my room, doing what I want with it, and it's always going to look like that. Once you have everything how you like, you can pull up the main menu, go to settings, and save your room. Now every time you load your room, it's going to look exactly how it was when you left it. For example, if we load into this default room, it changes things up to how it is when you initially start the game. Go back to your load, and now it's how it was earlier. And this is what my room looks like now. I took the time and found posters from the spreadsheet I shared earlier. I also organized all my games with their own labels, boxes, with box art. In the future, I'll probably add more things to this room, but as of now, this is fine for me. That's all I have, and I hope I helped you out. Thank you for watching.